By the 1960s, the Orange Bowl featured great plays, amazing players, and yes, even world leaders. Heisman Trophy winner Joe Bellino's catch for Navy versus Missouri in 1961 still ranks as one of the greatest catches in Orange Bowl history. Two years later, 73,380 fans would descend upon the 63 Orange Bowl to witness Alabama linebacker Leroy Jordan single-handedly turn back Oklahoma 17 to nothing. Among the fans in the crowd that day, President John F. Kennedy. President Kennedy and Bud Wilkinson were great friends. So before the game, Kennedy went by the uh, locker room and spoke to Bud's team. Well, the Alabama players found out about that and they used that as incentive to beat Oklahoma. Jordan, who was evidently inspired after meeting the president during the coin toss, went out and recorded 31 tackles, paving the way for Namath and the crew. First down Alabama on their own. Clearly, for these young boys, as well as for the entire stadium, Kennedy's presence there was a special moment, and it left its mark on many. President Kennedy was there uh, witnessing the game. Coach Bryant uh, was able to get us to focus at the right time and all. And uh, we went out there and shut him out, 17 nothing. Dick Williamson wide open for the touchdown. The 1965 Orange Bowl marked the first primetime night game in Orange Bowl history as Texas upset top-ranked Alabama and game MVP Joe Namath, 21 to 17. It, it was a big game for us, and it ended up being the first night game in the Orange Bowl. At any rate, uh, I had hurt my knee a few times, and uh, when we came to Miami to practice for the game, I did again. My heart was in the game, but it was tough to get around. I was with Coach Bryan at Alabama in 1961 through 65, and uh, we went to the Orange Bowl three times. We won two out of the three. The only one that we didn't win was the one against Alabama uh, versus Texas, of all people, and Joe Namath was the quarterback. And it got down to uh, fourth down and three inches at the uh, east end zone where we call timeout and Joe comes to the sideline and looks at Coach Bryant and myself and says, Coaches, what play do you want me to run? And I kind of gulped and looked at Coach Bryant because he sometimes makes that call and he looked at me because that's my responsibility. And between the time we looked at each other, Joe says, well, I'll just run out there and sneak it in. Good call, Joe, going out there and do that. And he vaulted over the top, but there was a big linebacker off of the Texas team that vaulted up there too, and they hit head to head right above the goal line and fell straight down to somewhere around the goal line. Now, your two wing officials come running in, and they're the ones that are supposed to raise their hands when they see that barely the nose of the football touched the goal line. So one's looking at the other, hoping the other one would raise his hands, the other one's looking at the other one, looking at the, hoping he would raise his hands, and neither one raised their hands. So after it seemed like a minute went by, but probably two seconds, the referee behind the quarterback turns to the Texas goal line and says, first down, Texas. And that's the way it went down for us to lose the only game that we lost. They always say, hey, Joe, Joe. You scored on that play, didn't you? I said, no, but I was over the goal line. A year later, Crimson turned the tide and defeated Nebraska 39 to 28, earning Bear Bryant the third of his six national championships. One of the great things about Coach Bryant was his ability to change with the flow of the players and the flow of the game. If he saw Daryl Royal's wishbone offense doing a great job, he was on that phone with Daryl Royal. He was getting the right kind of input from his friends and coaches and utilizing guys like Richard Todd and Jeff Rutledge that could run the wishbone. Uh, they were very successful and then he changed again, you see. Uh, Coach Bryant, he utilizes people to their best abilities. And uh, the players were convinced of that and that was one of the reasons he was very successful because he wasn't so, I'm not gonna change this. Hey, he knew change was a constant. Talk to any participants of Orange Bowl's past or present, and there's one thing they'll all agree on. In the cold and bitter dead of winter, uh, it snowed yesterday a little bit. Miami is the place to be. Welcome to Miami. 
it's truly one of the best. It, it, it's hard to be any better. Um, it, the hospitality, the people, uh, the atmosphere in Miami. Being in, in Miami is pretty exciting for our kids. We have some kids uh, who have never seen the ocean before, so it was really fun to watch them the first time they walked out to the ocean and looked around and saw this big body of water. The 60s and 70s were turbulent times, and the Orange Bowl has always been a mirror of the struggles, triumphs, and diversity that make America so rich. We had a number of African-American players, uh, Johnny Rogers, Rich Glover, and so on, that really impacted the game and it wasn't long before you saw Alabama the Southeast Conference all of a sudden moving toward uh, a lot of African-American players and so I think that was very significant. Well Johnny Rogers had a, a great ability to stop and go and that was the thing I think that set him apart and he could uh, stop move just and not lose any of his top speed that was a, one of the rare things about him. If you look back at the original members of Orange Bowl, they don't look like the Orange Bowl committee today. One of the things I'm most proudest of of Orange Bowl is we look like the community. At Metro, light up the holidays with the best deal in wireless. Switch and get your choice of two free phones from top brands. Plus, unwrap a brand new tablet with all the features you crave on us. Get unlimited data on all your devices with a full Amazon Prime membership included. Yeah. Metro gives you access to the hottest shows, shopping, free one-day delivery, and more. Get the best deal in wireless this holiday season, only at Metro. Lock it, find it, start it from anywhere with Remote Connect. Toyota, let's go places. As a single mother, my first job is care about Derek. Everything that I do is from him. When I moved to this apartment, after six months, we need to connect with the world. I use the internet to keep him in a language because that's the way to get connected with my family tradition. He has to know where he come from. We need internet essential. It's no excuses to not get connected. 